Hi everyone, it's Tanya MFK here with your 52 weeks of momentum lesson recap. If this is your first time here, my name is Tanya Marie Figueres Kreisinger, more easily known as Tanya MFK. I am a member of the 52 Weeks of Momentum course with Benjamin Hardy, and I come here every week to share the lessons, insights, and exercises that we do so you can catch a piece of your own momentum and tag along with us. So we are now in week eight, and this week's topic is creating your life vision, right? It's a big one, creating your life vision, like, oh, oh my gosh but it's not as crazy as it sounds. Uh, we're gonna walk you through the questions and the steps to start to develop this life vision for yourself. Now, this is something that Benjamin Hardy said he shared with us based on an immersion course that he did with Joe Polish and Craig Valentine um, that was called, I believe, the, uh, the Perfect Day Formula. So starting with that, um, the base of everything and where we're gonna jump off is looking at our values. We're going to look at our values. Now they call this the value pyramid. And at the top of this pyramid is family. So we have family, health, wealth, and experiences, right? Those are the top things that we as humans tend to have as our core values. Now, if you have something outside of that, do you, right? You know, whatever that is, add that in there. But these are the basics, kind of a what, what we start to start out with. If you don't know where to start, this is where we start. So family, health, wealth, and experiences. So looking at these things, we are going to answer, what are the greatest accomplishments that you want to achieve in the next 10 years? I don't know about you, but that's like, that's the face I just made was like, right? Like I hated that question, the interview, like what do you see yourself in five years, right? Um, but this is, <laughs> this is different. And instead of having somebody else ask you that question for their own benefit, you're asking yourself for your own benefit, right? So it's time to look at a bigger picture. And I know that seems crazy and it's not about having a perfect plan. It's about taking the time to step back and really think about it for a moment. What? do what I want to see? What would I want to accomplish in 10 years? What would I want that to look like? Right. And a really great inspiration, I would say to start with this is looking it up. You can look it on YouTube is the Stephen Covey 80th birthday video. I, believe, I, I don't know the exact name, but 80th birthday, Stephen Covey, you're going to totally find it. And ultimately what it is, is, is he went and he suggests that you envision, you know, your 80th birthday, right? So for most of us, that's a lot longer than 10 years from now. So looking at your 80th birthday and think, who's going to be there? You know, what is it going to be like? Who are you surrounded by? What would they say? I mean, what are, what are people going to say about you? Like, Hey, Oh, happy birthday, Tanya. You know, it's been so awesome. All these years. I remember, are they going to tell old stories? Like, what is it? Right? Think of what that really means. Cause at that point in your life, you're, you're really narrowed down into the things that matter. You've really had a lot of time to process and figure out what's going on in your life. So to be able to jump that far ahead and really visualize that is, is amazing. But if you can't do all that, you don't have the imagination, don't worry. Stephen Covey does it for you. And I think it was a really great piece for me to look at before I started answering these questions to kind of get the, the juices flowing, if you will. So check that out in any case throughout this process. I think it'll be really helpful. So for this press, like I said, we're only looking 10 years ahead. So I want to look at some samples that kind of always makes it easier, right? So for the first one, family, Benjamin Hardy actually shared with us uh, what he wrote and what he wrote was to, one was to adopt his kids. He was a foster parent for many years to three kids. And I say was because just last week they got all approved and, and the kids are officially adopted. So super exciting for him. Uh, everyone was really happy for him. Um, you know, quite a feat from my understanding. It's really difficult and all those things to go through. So awesome, awesome, awesome. So that actually happened. One was to adopt his kids. He also would like to have kids with his wife, move to Orlando and be a great husband and father. Right? So you can see that some, they're not crazy, crazy specific, but they're also not ultra, ultra vague either. Right? So, you know, he has these basic things under family over the next 10 years, things he'd like to see accomplished. Now, and the next one was under health, under health, he wrote to be in better shape than he was when he was 23. Apparently 23 was when he was in the best shape of his life. And 
he wants to beat that, I guess, as he gets older um, and wants to be in better shape than even that, right? So there's a health goal for you. It gives you kind of an idea or perspective of what that might be. Um, wealth, wealth is our next one. And so that you can have something like, I have this much in savings or I own a Tesla or, you know, I'm able to provide this now in whatever context that may be or, or purchased a home, right? Whatever your version of wealth is, that's what you'll have to figure out there. But what, not only what your version of wealth is and what that looks like, you know, what it'll be in 10 years. Okay. Then experiences, right? Cause ultimately life's made up of experiences and it's that, and it's that bottom of that period, the pyramid there, right? It's so the bottom of that pyramid. And I think of these things like, the bucket list items, right? The some days, you know, let's, I hate some days, right? Cause some day doesn't exist. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no some day on your calendar. So no more some days, look at them. Maybe it's 10 years from now, but at least they got a place. <laughs> they have a place, right? So look at those some days, look at those bucket list items or, or whatever it is that is an experience that you have in mind. This is where that would go. Okay. So once, so that that's, are our start. That's the start of identifying our values and looking at, at how we'd like this to progress and go within the next 10 years. So once we've done that, now we're going to look at the next three years. All right, we're going to look at the next three years. And let's get real specific. It's 2018 right now with this video. So next three years, we're going to be looking at 2021. Now, the first thing you're going to do is pick a really specific date. A specific date, right? Not just generalized, not like, oh, it's in March. You know, it is March 19th, right? You're gonna pick a very specific date. Now you wanna pick a specific date and like, again, random date, special date, doesn't matter, just pick a specific date. You are celebrating something. Hmm, that sounds familiar, right? What are you celebrating? We want you to come up and think about what you are celebrating, answer that. And as you're celebrating, you're looking back on the last three years from 2018, and you are going to write what your top three accomplishments were. Your top three accomplishments since 2018, we're now in 2021, what they were. And the reason we're looking back instead of forward is we're gonna write these three things down in past tense, right? So we wanna write them down in past tense. There is a lot of power in writing things down in the sense that they've already happened. It's a way to communicate to our subconscious of what we want to happen by presenting it in a way that it's already happened. It's already confirmed. It's already, we're already committed. It's done. It's there. It's happening, right? So there's really power in that. So that's why we're looking back. You're going to write those top three accomplishments in past tense, right? So one of the things that Benjamin Hardy shared with us that he wrote was, I want, I, I wrote five books. So in past tense, right? I wrote five books. That was one of his accomplishments. I wrote five books. So um, another kind of example for this, I think in general, was Darren Hardy. He's a writer as well. And he was known, uh, one of the things he's been known for was the story he told about writing his perfect wife, the ideal woman for him. And it was something crazy detailed, like 40 pages, like pretty wild. And I mean, it was the hair, the complexion, everything. He wrote it all down. And as he wrote it all down, um, he began to realize that at that time in his life, he, while he created this perfect situation, this perfect person, he was not a person who would be able, who would, who, who would be ready for that person. He was not the person that, that this dream person would necessarily want. So by creating this vision, he also, it also forced him to look at himself and see where he wasn't ready, where he wasn't a match for this. And he was able to take the steps to, to become that person, right? That, that's what a lot of this is all about. And so from what I understand now, he has his dream wife, he's the dream man, everything's all great. But this is how powerful visuals are. This is how powerful it is to write things down, to, to create these visions for ourselves. They create an an environment that trigger you to be the person that you want to be in life, right? This, um, this is exactly the thing that, that helps you to be. So you will do, and you will have, which means you are like, this is the stuff. These are the things, right? But it's not enough to just write it down. It's never going to be enough to just write this stuff down. So you need to get to that point, get to the beginning there to, to get the template so you can commit to these things and start walking the path to make them happen, 
right? We have to start here. We start by writing them down, but that's not where it stops. One of the things that we were challenged with this in this was to also look at making writing down things that are quantifiable. Now, not maybe not all things you have are able to be quantified, but if they are, if they're specific, um, like for Benjamin Hardy, he didn't write write more books. It was write five books. It was very specific. So if you're losing a specific amount of pounds or making a certain amount of money, try to make it quantifiable. Give it a real number that you can measure. Okay. So that was the three year vision and three year accomplishment goal thing there. So moving on from that, the next set of exercises, and we only have two more left. Um, the next set, well, two more of these, uh, two more left is we're going to look at the essential vision questions and 10 X vision questions. Okay. So you can use, I'm going to put a link uh, in the video below and you can use and click on that link to get the worksheet. So you can actually fill these out on your own and make it a lot easier to remember all this stuff. Um, so let's go through this. The next section, essential vision questions. And we'll go through these rather quickly. All right. So the first one is who are you? Who are you? Uh, it's like, it's like a big question, but I think in this goal, it's really to kind of consolidate that into something smaller. And one of the, the, the ways I approached this was if I was knocking on a door and someone was like, who is it? And I'd have to basically <laughs> explain who I am in that short sentence, you know, cause Tanya doesn't cut it. If they don't know me, they're going to be like, Tanya, like, you know, Tanya, nobody knows what that means, right? That doesn't help. Tanya, who, who is it? Who is it? So if I had that quick sentence, I had to explain to get you to open the door. I need to be able to put in that shell who I am. So I like that approach. Um, you can get, I'm sure as deep as you want as this, but who are you? And the second one is what are, who are the other people that are stopping you from what you are doing? right? Stopping you from what do you want to do? Where, who are the people in your life right now that are possibly stopping, holding you back from what you're doing? Okay. And the next one, number three is what is the number one obstacle in your way of success in life? What is the number one obstacle in your way of success in life? Number four, what is the first step to fixing this? Number five, what is missing from your life? Right? So a lot of these questions are really are going to take a little more mental time to really stop back and think like, Ooh, you know, what are these things and identify them. And then the last one is what keeps you up at night with anxiety? Now this doesn't have to be literal and it can be literal, you know, but what keeps you up at night in anxiety? What are those things that are just like, like too much, like, Oh, right. So, um, one of the things that they say are, people who have a difficult time getting to bed, sleeping at night, having rested sleep is because they don't have a clear conscience. I always feel weird saying that because the first thing in my mind is like, Oh, you lied about something, mm, right? No, that's not what we're talking about because your conscience is much more than that, right? I mean, you don't have a clear conscience. If you did something wrong, yeah, of course, it's going to stick there on the mind, but it also can be regrets and it doesn't have to be some big giant regret. It could be something as simple as the regrets of the day. It could be like, Oh darn, I didn't get back to so-and-so I didn't do this. I, uh, right. Um, it can be like loose, you know, those loose ends, those things that you're like, Oh, your conscious isn't clear. Your conscious isn't free to just relax and, and go to sleep because you're like, ah, dealing with these things that you didn't deal with or handle or close beforehand right? You're feeling frantic, you're feeling lost, you're, and you're holding it and keeping it alive in your subconscious, which is definitely not allowing you to sleep and get any rest, right? So the point of all that is looking at these questions, a lot of ways you can actually go through these questions just through your journaling session. You know, who am I? What is it that I want to be? Is there anything holding me back? Are there people in my life holding me back? Um, what is my number one obstacle right now? What is, what, how can I fix this? What is missing in my life right now? I mean, that can be the big giant thing like happiness or something, or it can be like, you know what, if I need to, to outsource this thing, or I need to deal with this thing to get the ball going on this, right? I mean, it can be something as simple as that. Um, and what's keeping me up at night? What am I not closing out or taking care of? So these are things that we need to look at at a bigger picture, of course, right? These are the essential vision questions. We're looking at this on a life scale. But this is also something you can definitely, definitely be looking at on a regular basis 
within your journaling. And that's something that Benjamin Hardy says he's, he's practically doing anyway, right? And that's, that's part of why he has the momentum he has, because this is something he's looking at and addressing, and it's allowing him to become who he is and who he wants to be, because he's constantly looking at it, reevaluating and seeing these things and being aware of them, right? So after that, after we've looked at these kind of vision things, now we're looking at 10 Xing your vision. Right. And these are six questions that he says you should ask in order to 10 X your vision, like 10 X, making them big, 10 times bigger. So the first one is what is the big plan for your life? Like what is the big plan that you feel is in store for you? Now this could be replaced with what is God's plan for you? What is the universe plan for you? What is this noble purpose that you feel? Um, what is the big picture plan for you? So from whatever place that feels, appropriate for your life. Um, that's what we're looking at. And then number two, in what way are you not acting in accordance to this plan? So if you can feel and identify, like, I know there's something bigger, there's something that I'm supposed to be working on, then in what way are you not acting in accordance to this? What way are you not walking in line with what you believe this is? This is? And who are you here to serve? Who are you here to serve? All right. This for my business people here, like this is something we're asked all the time, right? We're looking at this from a business standpoint, like who is my audience? Who is my, my target market? Who are these people, right? Who am I really here to serve? And we, we can look at it in all these ways. You know, some, is, is it this large world saving goal? Is it my neighbor, right? Who am I here to serve? And how are you here to serve them? Right? Just because we have to help them doesn't mean answer the what. Like, well, what, how, what am I doing? And number five, where do you need to think bigger? You know, a lot of times we are holding something so small. You know, where do we need to think bigger, act bigger, push more, learn more? Where can we act bigger? Okay, where can we act bigger? And number six, what is the first step and when can it be done? Right? That's always a thing. You know, we can't just stop at getting the idea. It's like, then well, what's the next step? The small step. We can't just look at the end result and say, okay, well, I got to now serve my neighbor. Well, what does that mean? What's the next step? What's the first thing to do to start doing that? So the end result of that. So what is the first step and when can it be done? All right. So 10 X in your vision. What is the big plan? Um, in what way are you not acting in accordance to this plan? Who are you here to serve? And how are you here to serve them? Where do you need to think bigger? And what is the first step and when can it be done? Okay, so these are the main things for you to answer and look at and get your juices flowing and your thoughts going to look at the bigger picture vision for your life, like for your life. Oh my gosh, for your life. But that's going to feel so good too, right? It's so good because you're, because there is something. You're not just living in a reactive state. You're not just going for whatever pops up and just, ooh, ooh, all right, like no thought process of your own. This is your time to sit back and look at it for yourself. Ah, exciting. So of all of those things, we have a one more set. And the last set is actually the required exercise and assignment for this. So if you're following along, just personally doing your thing, this is definitely the part. If you're not going to do any of the other ones, you're just going to ponder them. This is when you really want to focus on and do. Um, I think all of them are definitely necessary if you want to, to get the most from this exercise. Um, but for those of us that are members and for the accountability group who's also following along, guys, um, this is the actual required assignment. And this is called um, the price of gold. And the quote here is, who is giving you stupid gold stars in life and what are they costing you? And that's Craig Ballantyne. So the exercise here is called cut the stupid gold stars. And the first one is, what are you getting approval for that does not serve you? What are you getting approval for that does not serve you? And Craig Valentine had wrote, um, working too much, putting too many hours in at the office, having a productivity identity, right? And you can totally see that right away, right? You can see like, oh, right. People would be like, yeah, man, you're such a hard worker. You're there all the time. It's amazing. But for him and his life and his situation, that is not necessary. That's not serving him. Doing all this work and putting is not serving whatever his goals are at that time. So he's getting approval for it. People are like, that's awesome, that's great, right? But it's not actually serving him, right? Think of like the frat guy who's like 
Dude, I took like 24 Jaeger shots and everyone's like, yeah, bro, it's so amazing. But is that really serving him? Is that really going to help him towards his highest good? Probably not. But there are people there cheering him on. Yeah, buddy, that's amazing, right? So <laughs> looking at question number two, who is giving you this approval that does not serve you? Like, where is this approval coming from that doesn't serve you? That's the next thing for us to really look at, right? I mean, maybe, maybe it's time to look at a different set of friends. And number three, why are you seeking this approval? Right? Because if we're getting approval, that means we're accepting it, which means we're like, oh, hey, does everyone think I'm doing good here? Is this all right? So why are you seeking this approval? And Craig Valentine had wrote, because I incorrectly associated work success and productivity with my own self-worth. And that one is huge. That is something that I personally struggled with for a long time and basically equated how much output I had to how good I was as a person. The more I could do, the more I could show, the more I could produce, then the better person I was. And that was not serving me because on the other side, when my family was going, you're, you're not here, you're not spending time, you know, we never see you, these types of things, I'm over here going, but look, look at all the stuff stuff I can do, look at all the things I'm just like, but it wasn't meeting the need and the desires over here, right? Which wasn't creating a good situation for my family life. So where was that approval coming from and who that was that approval coming from? I needed to identify so I could step away from that and start to go to the right places and the approval that I, that mattered to me, right? Okay. So the next question in this series was, what is it costing you? I think I gave a good example just right there of what that was costing me. So you're looking at cutting the stupid gold stars by what are you getting approval for that does not serve you? Who is giving you the approval that does not serve you? Why are you seeking this approval? And what is it costing you? And to flip that, we want to look at getting the gold stars, right? The good gold stars, getting the good gold stars. So getting the good gold stars, we're saying, what do you need to get approval for doing? What is it that you are wanting approval for doing? What are the right people to give you this approval? So this could be like moving forward with a business idea. This could be um, improving a relationship, right? And saying, look, I, this is something that I, I want to know that I'm doing well. Are we doing okay here? And who needs to really give you that? Where is that going to come from? Where is that understanding? And yeah, this is good. I'm feeling good. We're good. We're good here. Where's that coming from? And how will this serve your vision? And what I really like about this last question is that it's easy, I think, in this situation to fall into an unhealthy version of approval again. Like, oh, okay, so I'm going to go write approval. Is it okay? Am I okay? Am I okay? And, and trying to get someone to tell you that it's okay. But is this the approval that's serving your vision, right? So that's kind of like the temper. That's the thing that's going to keep it in check, all right? So I really like this question in there. So, so yeah, that, guys... That's actually it. Ooh. It's a lot of questions. It's a lot to look at. It's a lot to open your mind and start just cre creating just that. Exactly. The vision, the life vision, right? And getting an idea and a template and somewhere to work from. And it's a lot. It's a lot to examine, but it's not hard. It's not actually hard. I mean, if you think that it takes a little bit of time, you know, maybe some of these ideas you've already had in your head, you've just never sat and wrote them, wrote them down, or maybe you've never looked at them before. So maybe this is a, an hour practice. Maybe this is like a half a day thing that you're doing, maybe more because you really need to wrap your head around. But is that small amount of time really, I mean, ultimately small amount of time is, is that not better than drifting through life? than living in reaction to other people's decisions instead of your own. Because if you don't have a vision, you don't have anywhere you're headed, then you're just, you're just wandering. And whatever kind of comes your way or jumps in the road, you're like, hmm, you're there. Maybe you'll stop. Maybe you won't. You're going to go, right? Because you're just reacting to everyone else's, what they're doing. Because they know where they're going. They know what they're doing. You're just doing the, you know, matrix thing there. Um, and isn't it better? It's better than filling up regrets when you don't meet your goals because you never actually work towards them, right? Like that's a crappy feeling right there. So it's, it's not hard. It's a lot, but it's not hard. These, this is about you. This is about your life. This is about your potential. This is about really what you really want. You know, and that's the thing. You don't have to want some grandiose, crazy thing, but you need to take the time to step and look at it and understand that you don't want a grandiose, crazy thing. 
right? Like be clear and understand like, you know what? I always thought I needed to be a millionaire and I'm realizing it's actually not my goal. Good, awesome. Now it's clear and you can have a vision towards the thing that you've decided is important. Maybe it's being the most awesome grandpa. Maybe it's being the most, you know, best cookie baker at the PTA, whatever that is. Great. The point is, is that you took a moment to step back and make it clear, put it in perspective and have a vision towards it. Okay. So do these exercises for those following along. You're obviously going to definitely do the gold star exercise. It's required. You'll have that in your, um, in your homework assignment sheet. Um, so yeah, it's for the, the accountability group. You got that. The rest of you, I hope these exercises are something you'll aim to do and find benefit from them. And if, you know, if this is helpful for you and you guys like this and you like having these little kind of life checks every week, then make sure to click that subscribe button and you'll get notified when our next lesson comes up. And if you want to take all of this type of information and translate it into your entrepreneurial journey, that is definitely why you need to come and join the Biz Builders group. The link is in the description. It's a free private Facebook group where we support each other, grow together, all as entrepreneurs and learn skills learn balance, all these great things that we need to succeed and move forward. So go ahead and check that out. Love to see you in there. I will see you guys all next week. Have a great, great week. Get a vision. Bye.